So originally, today's episode of Monday Maps was supposed to be all about how to create battle map visualizations and explainers using uh, Adobe After Effects and Geo Layers. I've actually already produced this video. It was ready to go. I had a sponsorship set up, and it's had a kind of this like comedic angle focusing on the Spotify controversy between like Joe Rogan and Neil Young, and it was just a ridiculous tutorial. However, just the other day, Russia decided to invade Ukraine, so I figured that... Um, Probably not the best time to release a tutorial about this. Just felt weird. So I decided to shift gears, um, putting that tutorial on hold for a while until I figure out a better time to, to release that. So today we're gonna be focusing on uh, tips and tricks for geo layers, kind of focusing on beginner to intermediate level. This is a handful of stuff that's really gonna make your life easier if you're working in geo layers. And if you're new to geo layers, this video is really gonna help you. I wanna give a quick shout out to all my patrons who joined my Patreon page that I launched last week. Special shout out to Simon. He is a YouTuber who has a channel called The Track Record, which I will link to down in the video description. Go check it out. He's kind of a new YouTuber, already creating some really good stuff, and uh, super interested to see where that goes. Also, big shout out to my man, Joseph Culligan. Thank you very much. If you wanna go see more about my Patreon page and what I offer to my patrons, uh, you can go check out a link to that as well down in the video description. And today's video is actually sponsored by our good friends at Envato. With a subscription to Envato Elements, you get access to over 50 million creative digital assets. These include graphic templates, icons, stock photos, video templates, music tracks, sound effects, font, photos. It's crazy everything that you get. They offer a nice and clean, simple lifetime commercial license, which is good even after your subscription ends. Following the link in the video description is gonna give you 50% off when you select an annual subscription, which will give you access to everything on the site for under $20 a month. For real, it's worth the money. I'm inside of After Effects. I'm gonna to go to Window, Extensions, GeoLayers 3. And now I'm gonna set up a new map comp. So I'm gonna go over here to the United States and click on Create Map Comp. And I'm gonna select Map Tyler Light for the map comp imagery. Now when you get your map comp here, you'll notice it's really low resolution and that's how GeoLayers works. So before you export your final animation, you wanna finalize, which is essentially gonna download all the high res map tile imagery um, and make everything look good. So if you wanna see what a particular frame looks like, you can finalize by one individual frame. To do that, hold Control and click on the Finalize button, and it even tells you right here one frame of your containing comp is finalizing, and it tells you the shortcut here. That's a great way to work without wasting time finalizing your entire timeline. Now, I don't like to work with the default labels, so to turn this off, you simply click on this button here, and then you can deselect the A, and that's gonna deactivate all those labels. If you do want to use the labels, however, you can go into the map comp settings and then down at the bottom you have all these options down here. And you can toggle that off again there. So let's say I want to show a driving route from Los Angeles to New York. I can quickly do this with a couple of like automated tools here inside of GeoLayers. So first I want to download the location. So I'm going to go up here to the keyword search bar here and I can search the geodata here. So I'm gonna to go to Los Angeles and I'm gonna click this add to browser button. That's gonna add the location down here. And I'm gonna type in NYC for New York City and I will add that to my browser as well. Now it's important to realize that if you don't move these elements into your favorite features, when you close out After Effects, this is gonna go away and you're gonna to have to re-download this data. So I'm gonna grab Los Angeles and New York and then I'm gonna go down here and I'm gonna click on this little connect features button and there's a bunch of different options. I wanna show the route by car. So it's really cool, you can pick a bunch of different way options here. I'm gonna pick car. Now that creates this path here, shows us the distance. And now to quickly and easily animate this, I'm gonna click on this draw features button, but first I need to select a layer style. So you do that up here, and uh, let's say I wanna select, uh, I want this to be a black stroke, so I'm gonna select one of the, de these are all default layer styles here that kind of match the theme of your map comp. I'll go click draw features and down here I can simply draw the feature or I can animate the feature path. So I'm going to click on this and I can select how many seconds I want the animation to go. I'm going to select five and click create animation. Now we can see a new shape layer is here and now I've got this little black stroke of the path animating along. If I click on the shape layer, hit U, you're going to see the keyframes here so I can change the timing of this. I can add some easy ease here and really um, change the look of the animation. So this is a real fast way to create a um, map path animation. Now let's say I want to zoom in and actually show the feature, have it like fill up the frame. I can quickly do that as well. Once again, with my path selected, 
I'm going to go click on Fit View to Feature, and there are two automated animation features here. I can animate the view along the feature so the camera would move along with the path, or I can animate the view to the feature, and that's gonna have it zoom from my current position to um, the zoomed in to the feature. And pay attention here, I've got my playhead here. I don't know if it's going to start the keyframe here, from here. I think it actually might do that. So if I click Animate View to Feature, and then I pick uh, five seconds, create animation. I'm gonna go click on my map comp and hit U, and you see, yeah, it actually did. So it's important where your playhead is located. So now I just need to move these keyframes back here. And now you can see it's zooming in and the path is animating on. So in, a, in a, like a matter of minutes here, I've created a really uh, dynamic and cool animation. However, it's not playing back very fast. What I usually do is when I'm working in geo layers, I go to Window, Preview Panel, and I set the skip to somewhere between two and five, depending on how intricate the map is. It's gonna skip those uh, frames, and then you can set it to something like half. You really, It really depends on your system. You can play with the settings here to get it to play back. Okay, a little bit better. And once again, you saw that these animate on from where the playhead is. And since it was set to five seconds, it was smart enough to know, okay, we're not gonna go five seconds. We're gonna stop at the end of the map comp. So that's a pretty cool feature. And I can go to the end here and I can go control finalize again to see what this last frame is gonna look like. Let's see how detailed it looks. Okay. But you can see as you finalize one frame, I zoom back out, it loses all the other map comp imagery. So be aware of that workflow. Let's say I deliver this map to a client and they don't like the, the styling of my map path here. Well, I can change that. I'm gonna go up to layer styles and I can select a different, uh, a different color here. So let's uh, select this here. And you see, I can swap the shape layer style. So if, as long as I have this selected, I can swap that out and it retains that animation on there, which is very cool. Now I can't really see this. So what you could do is you could go in here and you can actually edit the style and you could change the stroke width, the stroke color. You can have it set to like a default layer blending mode. You can extrude it. There's a ton of different custom options you could do to create a, a custom layer style. In fact, I'm gonna go ahead and do that. Let's do new style and I'll call this red map path. And I'm gonna turn off the fill and I'll turn on the stroke slash point. I don't want it to use fill color. Um, I'm gonna have it use like a red color. Apply. I'll set the stroke to 10. You can even have it set to be dashed and then have the dash speed automatically animate. And you'll have previews here, like these are all dashed strokes. This one's a data driven. Okay, now I'm gonna click apply. And now with this selected again, I'm gonna swap that layer style. All right, now let's say I wanna label the two cities. I can go up here to my label templates and I have a bunch of different options. So right here with place top, I can keep that selected and grab both Los Angeles and New York. And then right down here, I'll click on label features and I can add labels and that will auto like geo reference those and attach them there. And they even have animation on there and they're gonna scale with the map comp. And then I can simply move this to match up when that hits. I can move the New York label to here, real simple. There are a lot of options for label templates. You can actually get on here and download templates and there's a lot of better ones. So let's go over here to locators this is just a template project that it's gonna load in. And I'm gonna select this because this is gonna give me responsive time. Very, very cool. And now when I go to my label templates, you're gonna see there are a ton of different locators here. And there's even a locator for the city. So I can swap out the labels as well. So let's uh, swap out the New York for this particular one here. That's just gonna give us an icon there of the city. I can do that over here as well. I can manually place these label templates as well. So if I select like car crash, there's this little button here that says add template label. I'm gonna click on this and now I get some crosshairs. So let's say right here we have a car crash. I'm gonna click on this and click add label. And now I can have this start here actually. Now with my label template selected, if I go to effect controls, you can see there are a plethora of different options here. And there are three really important ones here that are gonna control how your label looks. So you have scale with map, rotate with map, and rotate along path. So if I select scale with map, watch what happens. You can see it changes sizes, and basically it's gonna be small and then it'll scale up. So if that's the kind of look that you want, 
you can change that. You can have it rotate with the map as well. So if I click on this and then I grab the map here and I'm going to right click and grab my map, that's going to allow me to control the bearing and the pitch. If I grab that, check out what happens. And we have a problem now. This one's intersecting with the map and that's because I need to toggle this to set it as a 3D object. And now that it's 3D, it's gonna rotate and stick uh, flat to the surface of the map. Whereas these are not 3D objects, these are sticking up as 2D objects, which is kind of a cool look. And you can see as I pivot the map around, those are kind of always gonna kind of auto orient. You can offset the position here. This is all keyframeable. And not only that, but you can go to the scale attribute of a layer. And even though it has an expression on it, you can still override that. And let's say I wanna bring the scale of this uh, down to 10. It's going to be a lot smaller or you can even bring it up and it will still scale with the map based on that expression and that's key frameable so there's so many customization options if you want to download a bunch of features that you can draw out there's a little plus button here that says add, that says add features to browser if i click on this it says download features so if i click here look at all these different options you have so you can do countries country border lines states and provinces the ocean river lines. So if I go to states and provinces, that's going to automatically download this big feature of like everything in the world. Actually, I didn't want states and province lines. I wanted states and provinces. So now if I go down to the United States, click on here, you can see I have all the 50 states. And as I click on them, it's going to give me a preview. So if I want to add California, as well as New York, I have the options here. I can change the layer style to make it solid, and then I can draw these features out. Once again, if you do not add these to your favorite features, if you close out After Effects, they're going to be gone. You're not going to lose what you've already drawn out in your project, but the reference uh, files here are going to be gone. You can also manually pin objects to the map comp. So I have a clouds project here. So if I open up this comp, this is a simple cloud that I have created. So I'm going to go back to my map comp here. And I'm just going to grab this and drag it on here. And you can see this isn't attached to the map comp right now. It's just floating here in 2D space. So what I want to do is I want to bring it over here. Can maybe uh, scale it up. And then I can click this little button that says pin selected layers to map. So I'm going to pin that. And now you'll see that it moves with the map. But we're having a problem. Uh, we need to set this particular, I would go to effect controls. We want it to scale with the map. So as we scale in on the map, now it's going to actually stick to the map. So that's cool. I can do this again. I can bring this one over here. We can add another cloud, scale this way up, pin that here. And once again, go to effect controls, scale with map. And you can add like a little like gentle blur to these and you can also keyframe the pixel offset. So if you want them in the middle of the screen and then you can animate them off screen. As this moves along, it's a pretty cool way to work. You can also create custom label templates. So if I, let's say I duplicate this and I'm gonna call it cloud. Now, if I open up the geo layers three items, right over here, you can see label templates. If I open these up, you'll notice that these are all the label templates that you can see under this menu here. So all I need to do is basically grab this cloud and drag it over to label templates. And now check this out. If I go over to label templates, this is now available as a custom template. So if I have this selected, now I can use the geo data to geo reference it and place it wherever I want. So if I want to put a cloud over Los Angeles, I can go over here and just click add label. And now I have a cloud directly over Los Angeles. One of my all time favorite features of geo layers is this little draw arrow button here. This allows you to quickly draw an arrow, which are obviously super handy elements when you're making a map. So I'm going to click on this and you'll see that this automatically adds a shape layer to my uh, project here, as well as a little vertices and the pin tool has been activated. And now as I start to draw out here on the comp, you're gonna see that we get this arrow. And the arrow is based on our shape layer style over here. And you can draw as many points as you want and it's gonna kind of meander around, but the real power of these, I'm gonna switch to the selection tool, is in all the effect controls. So I can really, uh, change the look of it here like this. So I'm going to have it kind of stretch the path here. And now if you go over to effect controls, you look at all of these options. I'm going to switch the color here, give it like a red color and check all this out. You can mess with the trim, the width, the head size, you can have it taper. 
There's a bunch of different dash options. I'm gonna quickly play around with these. So first I'll adjust the width, and then I can come down here and start to play with the dash, and the dash is the really cool part. I can adjust the dash settings, and then at the bottom there's a dash speed. And this is one of the coolest features because even when your map is static, that dash will add movement. So it's just gonna make your map more dynamic. And you'll see if I open up the layer, press the U key, there are trim keyframes already added here. So I can change the speed of this. Really, arrows are just the coolest. Up here, you have a little button that says run script file. This has a lot of powerful options. Like for example, a scale bar. So if you click on scale bar, you can specify where you want that scale bar to go. Let's say we want it on the left. Now I can go and customize this scale bar. You can see it right down here. I can change the size of it make it a lot bigger. And now you can see the scale text as well. I can go to the character panel, increase this, and it's all pinned correctly. These are just so good. And for all you Imperial folks, you can switch it to miles and you can set this to fix as well to make it a more specific uh, scale option there. And, and now as you see, as this zooms in, check it out. And even as I scale this, oh, yo, yo, I just love this. One other tip for beginners is if you go grab your map comp, you can add like a curves or levels effect. If you bring this down a little bit, it's going to make, you know, it'll darken down the map comp and that's just going to make those overlays pop. So if you want to add some pop to them, you can just uh, mess with the curves or you can add a tint effect, which is automatically going to desaturate it. And the last but certainly not least tip, go over here to map comp settings and then turn on your imagery motion blur. This is going to activate motion blur for your map comp imagery because it does not work with the native motion blur inside of Adobe After Effects. However, I do need to turn that on uh, for all of my other elements here. Now I'm going to finalize and export. Okay, so they have it. Some tips and tricks if you're going to use geo layers inside of Adobe After Effects. Curious to know what your favorite tips are for this powerful plugin. If you have any, let me know it down in the comments section. Once again, uh, go check out Envato Elements for real. They're an awesome sponsor. I love them. Uh, you get a crazy bang for your buck. So go check out that link down in the video description. And uh, once again, a big shout out to my patron producers, Joseph Culligan and my boy Simon over at The Track Record. Go check out his YouTube channel, putting out some cool stuff. If you wanna go check out the Patreon, um, I'm giving away project files as well as animation presets. I even have a tier where you get exclusive tutorials. So go check it out. All right, I'll see you in the next one.